Anyone driving through KwaZulu-Natal can't have failed to notice the incredible progress of the N3 upgrades. Today, Sanril TV is in the eastern region at Naidu Consulting, a 25-year-old civil engineering company. Sanril's infrastructure is built to last. We looked into how contractors, Naidu Consulting, ensure the sustainability of infrastructure and further, how they also ensure the sustainability in terms of the environment and local communities. Now, part of sustainability is obviously ensuring, in simple terms, that the end construction can actually stand the test of time. Now, what are some of the new technology, you know, going beyond the traditional methods that you currently use? What new technologies are you using in the work that you currently do? For example, the link information management system. Okay. I think it's very important to note that sustainability goes more than planning just planning. So what we at NIDO Consulting have done is that we've created a suite of um, management systems that will help um, clients like Sunral um, take care and be in the know of what their assets are doing. So um, we've developed customized um, management suites. Um, we have our bridge man um, management system, which we call our BMS. So that tracks the bridge conditions and maintenance. We have a pavement management system, our PMS that also assesses the road condition and deterioration over time. We have a compliance management system, our CMS, which ensures regulatory compliance um, and legislation, just to name a few. But um, I think it's very important um, for the clients, for clients like Sunral to know their assets so they can plan their budgets um, when it's time for maintenance and also to ensure that the life cycle cost analysis when we do these projects are known upfront. It also helps um, our efficiency as the consulting um, when we're giving out reports and reporting to Sandral on the work that we've done, the expenditure to date and so forth. Um, those are just some of the innovations that we, we've come across. Now with these innovations that you've just mentioned, how are you reporting that to Sandral? Um, I think it's um, firstly very well received by Sandral because it also eliminates some of their work in a sense because we have it in a dashboard it's summarized you have your your charts you have all your your graphs and so forth so we usually deliver it in our progress meetings and we have um, partnered with the contractor and Sanral for everyone to have access to to this dashboard and it just makes it easier for when Sanral is also reporting for their sake. Now I know that Sanral commissioned Naidu Consulting uh, to basically get information in terms of the sustainability and durability of the work that you do. Now, this is also specific to make sure that everything that you do is durable for the current South African weather conditions. How exactly are you carrying out this research and reporting it to Sunrise? One of the, the major projects um, is the N3 Ashburton, which um, Sunrise has actually commissioned us to do research on. Um, so the research was focusing on um, researching an appropriate asphalt surfacing to use not only on our project, but for the N2 and N3 corridor. So what that research, what we got out of that research was that the use of open graded and gap graded um, asphalt mixes provided um, functionality performance requirements in a sense that um, it provided enhanced safety for the road users because it reduces the splash and spray. It also um, has a lower, lower noise um, compared to other mixes and also um, improved skid resistance. So that's just in terms of functionality. And in terms of looking, we looked at this um, surface and saying, how can you make it more durable? Um, and that's when we incorporated um, vitamin rubber crumbs into the mix. Um, and not only does that assist with durability, it's also more environmentally sustainable because it uses um, crumbed rubber tires, which otherwise would have been wasted. And I think just to add, we've been very um, appreciative of the fact that Sandral has enabled us um, to undertake this research. And um, it's one of the things that um, I personally like about Sandral working with them for, for quite a few years is that they foster innovation, they encourage innovation, and they allow um, consultants like us to, to, to be at the forefront and to, to explore new things that haven't been explored um, elsewhere. Um, the research, we, we looked at international research and here we are implementing it now. So um, we are very grateful for, for this enabling environment um, as well as the drive for innovation in South Africa. 
How would you say you contribute to the daily life of ordinary South Africans? I think looking at something as small as when people drive on roads that I've designed, um, that takes a sense of accomplishment for me because we also ensure safety on roads. I think that's a big thing. Um, there's a lot of accidents, a lot of accident stats you guys know about. So um, being able to produce uh, a sound and safe road for, for, for road users is amazing and it's, it's something not to be taken lightly. And um, I think I contribute overall just um, besides the, the safety parts, just making South African infrastructure um, better overall. And Tabling, just to show you, this is an example of the Bragg mix. So it's bitumen rubber asphalt gap braided. Um, it's, this is cause that we've taken from our projects in Intuba Marshall Interchange. And yeah, so this is one of the, the results from the research we've been doing from Sandram. Now, going beyond the longevity of the work, you know, in terms of the sustainability issue, do you utilize um, renewable energy sources as well as recyclable material in your work? Yes, in Tabuleng. So there is a, in South Africa, there's a dire crisis. It's a critical issue of waste tire management with 11 million tires approximately being moved to landfill sites annually. And bitumen rubber, which is blending conventional bitumen with ground tire rubber or scrap tire derived materials. What this does is it enhances properties of our conventional bitumen and that is uh, it increases its elasticity, its durability, resistance to cracking. And on our N3 projects, we have over 100,000 tons of bitumen rubber asphalt being produced. And this significantly diverts all of this material that would have been moved to a landfill. And it's also reduced our carbon footprint on our projects. If you take a look at the scope of works on our N3 projects, for example, uh, one of it was the rehabilitation of our alternate routes. And here in our designs, we propose warm mix asphalts. And how that's deferring to our normal hot mixes is that when it's produced, it's produced at lower temperatures. And that significantly reduces the carbon emissions during the production of asphalt. Uh, similarly, it will require less compaction, which means less roller passes uh, and less carbon emissions from machines on site. Talia, it sounds like there's a lot of moving parts in the scope of work that you do. Talk to me about what you need to consider in your designs. In Tabulang, that's very simple. We follow ESGS, and what that means is environmental, how are we benefiting the environment, social, who are we impacting on our project, Governance, are we following uh, best practices? Are we following the correct legislation? And then sustainability, which is a new one. And that's, are we using our material deconstruction bands? Are we using carbon quantification on sites? Are we using our haulage mapping to make sure that material flow on site is efficient? So this is asphalt. And what it consists of is aggregate. So these little pieces are actually stone. Mm -hmm. And the black sticky glue that you're looking at, that's bitumen. And it's coating your aggregate. Mm -hmm. And then what we do is we'll lay this over and compact. Oh, and compact it. Okay. So Talia, what would you say um, Naidu Consulting's best practices are, especially when you look at how you guys are innovating for the future? Uh, with South Africa and our government dissenting to our Climate Change Act, which was promulgated in July of 2024, as well as aligning to many sustainability international standards that focus on quantification and mitigation of carbon dioxide equivalent emissions. Decarbonization should now be central to engineering, civil engineering practice. Um, so South Africa has adopted the Paris Agreement, if you are aware of it. And what this means is that our country has a goal of reducing our carbon dioxide equivalent emissions by 350 to 420 megatons uh, in 2030. And what NIDA Consulting has done is we are at the forefront and we're leading sustainability, climate resilience. And how do you deliver Sandwell's targets in the work that you deliver? One of the things that we have to deliver is sound infrastructure, but with the Climate Change Act and its milestones, Sandal is required to produce carbon mitigation plans. And for that, our tools help to assist them in a framework for mitigation of carbon that they may submit to the minister.